That's right. We're going to flash back to when Michelle Oliver took us to dine in the D at Diamond Steak and Seafood. The smell of steak grilling, fresh seafood sautéing, and these two giant diamond doorknobs will let you know you've arrived at Diamond Steak and Seafood. People get a kick out of it. It's fun to see the reaction when they, when they see them. That's Adam Merkel, the owner of Diamond Steak and Seafood, both the one here in Royal Oak and the original one in Howell. Well, it was an existing restaurant uh, in downtown Howell for 27 years. We figured we'd try to ramp it up a little bit and bring in you know, fresh ingredients and make things from scratch. It was a rough year, year and a half as a start but we just really, you know, stuck to our values. Somehow here we are in downtown Royal Oak uh, with, uh, with our second one. Despite having the same name, the new restaurant looks quite a bit different than the original, with lighter colors and a more modern feel. They really uh, wanted to tailor the space for the area, so it has much more of an urban feel. It seems to really work for what's, you know, it feels like it's been here for, for a long time. However, they do serve much of the same food, including their popular filet mignon tips with their sweet Cajun sauce, or their homemade carrot cake served warm with freshly piped icing. We just try to do, you know, our takes on, you know, new American foods, steaks and seafoods. Uh, we want to make sure that everything we have is craveable. So today we're going to make their wild flounder minier. Manure means the miller's wife. So this Whoa. has been around for a long time. We do the same thing they used to. Season our wild flounder, dredge it in some flour, and then it's ready to saute. Now we can see a little bit of smoke and heat coming off. Oh yeah. So when we do drop it. our fish in, we always want to do it away from ourselves. Okay. You never want to splash yourself with this oil. So ready? Yep. All right. Beautiful, awesome. beautiful. You can see that little bit of a splash, but it yes. goes away from us. But it goes away. I yep. like that. It doesn't take long for the fish to turn a golden brown. So we use a fish spatula. Nice. So as you can see, it's kind of got some holes. It's nice and delicate. It's great for fish. So we're going to want to flip it over. And, and again, same thing, you want to try to kind of flip it away from yourself because it splashes. It did splash. Beautiful. Once the fish is cooked, we move on to making our pan sauce. So in the same pan that we just cooked the fish in, we're going to be using the same, like, the yeah. little yummy bits. Yeah, we're going to take the residuals of the flavors from the cooking and make a pan sauce. We add in lots of butter. We're starting to get that nice brown. So oh, yeah, this, this brown is the point butter. where we want those milk solids to brown. We get that okay. nice nutty smell. Yeah. Like even if you start to smell it, you can smell that nuttiness. Yeah. That's what really makes this sauce great. Then we finish our sauce with some fresh lemon juice. Oh, it sizzles. Yeah, I we like sizzle. It. So we're kind of cooking that lemon juice into our final product. Now onto the plating. We start with some mashed potatoes. We use a piping bag inside the restaurant. Nice. So we give it a couple of twists, and you want to hold it between your finger and your thumb okay. like that so that you can squeeze with your other fingers. Next comes the flounder, which we lay on top of the potatoes. Then we finish it with a drizzle of the pan sauce, fresh parsley, and crispy capers. 